Let's bring in Dom Rizzo of T. Rowe Price. Welcome back to Closing Bell. Good to see you. Hey, Scott. Good to see you again. All right. So it's a pivotal week, uh, obviously, right? Master the obvious. Uh, but it comes also as this sector looks, I don't know, I'm not going to say wobbly, but yesterday was kind of ugly. Uh, are we primed for a pullback or is this just a momentary blip? Well, let's look at the numbers, Scott. If you look at the global technology index, that's up roughly 40 percent year to date. Semiconductors are up 45 percent. Software's up 40 percent. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we saw a bull market consolidation over the next three to six months or so. When we when we look out 18 months, which we're always trying to optimize for in our strategy, we still like this place. We still see fundamentals inflecting positively. And we still have relatively reasonable valuations. I mean, I, well, OK, let's go there then since you just I was going to ask you something else. But since you just relatively reasonable valuations, well, what does that mean? Because yeah. you have people who look at these valuations of, let's just say, the, the big five, or you can even throw a couple more in, in there. And the multiples have expanded dramatically since the, the beginning of the year. How do you justify it? Yeah, it, well, it's certainly a harder setup than last time we were on, right? Last time I was on, the Global Technology Index had a forward two PE of roughly 21 times earnings. Now it's roughly 24 times earnings. But you got to keep it in perspective, too, right? Historically, that peaks at roughly 27 to 28 times earnings. So it's definitely a harder setup from here. You have to be smart about what you're investing in. But it, there, we're still in the range of reasonableness. You know, Sebastian Page, our head of multi-asset, had a great piece on LinkedIn about this. It really depends on how the AI boom is going to play out. You know, if the AI boom plays out anything like the Internet boom and you look at valuations relative to then, it actually still looks a lot like 1998 rather than the year 2000. So, yes, you got to be cautious. you got to be smart. And we could see a bull market consolidation here in the next three to six months. But over the next 18 months, we still feel relatively positive. Who do you think is most, and I've used this you know, terminology already, priced for perfection? What some suggest that Netflix and Tesla were, and that's the reason why, you know, even the, it's not like their earnings were, were horrible or anything like that. But the stock suffered, you know, so, somewhat significantly, at least for a day or so. Who, who in your ownership group do you think is now most priced for perfection that you would worry could have a pullback? Well, you know, again, like I said, a lot of different stocks may, may pull back in the relatively short term, but we still feel good on the medium to the long term. Netflix and Tesla are great examples, right? So Netflix actually had very positive fundamentals in the report. I think the, the trend on password crackdowns um, is going quite well, and I think that the advertising tier is starting to see some positive inflecting data points. Now, the question is, are we going to get more ads in the next quarter than we did this quarter? Who knows? That remains to be seen. On Tesla, on the other hand, you know, you actually saw some really positives in that fundamental report as well. Cost per unit is going down very nicely. And of course, if we get a full self-driving OEM adoption, that would be very positive for the stock. So that's why we saw those two stocks uh, pull back a little bit.